I'm going to show you actually how to put some piping around the edge of a of, of a block. And I'm, well, this is just going to be a mug rug. This is one of our samples. We did a tester for one of our quilts. So we have our piping strip made up. Just check to see it's it's long enough. Right, we've got plenty. So I've got a lining cut for the back of it. So what I do is I generally just clip my piping into position. And at this corner, you'll see that there's a, a point here and we need to just clip our piping not all the way into the stitching but pretty close to the stitching so that when it turns the corner it opens up okay that opens up now I do put two more little nicks and just little shallow ones at each corner and that just helps it turn the corner a little bit better so Again, this line here, a deep clip, a little shallow clip either side, and so on. So we get back to the top of this. Let's go to the machine. Right, we're back. So we've got our, our um, piping clipped around the edge. Can you see that little corner there? Where so that, that's that corner there, so I've got a little bit of fabric still sitting in there. I haven't clipped all the way to the stitching. I'm going to start halfway down. These quilt clips are quite big because they're proper quilt clips. Now what I want to do is I want to trip, trim off this end so as it's flush. And then I want to just pinch the rope out from the middle. Pull it back for about an, an inch, two and a half centimeters, and trim that off. And then let it sit back inside. Now you can see that's where that finishes inside that. I can, I can feel it with my fingers. So I'm going to put a little pin there because that is going to be my starting and finishing point. So I'm just going to line this up and I'm going to start at that pin. Doesn't matter if it's not quite right on there. And I'm going to just stitch around the edge of this, keeping my edges level. And I don't generally always use clips, I quite often will sew up into my corner, lift my foot and then turn. Now with some zip feet like this particular one I find that when I turn my corner my piping gets stuck under the corner of my foot but it's easily rectified. Come up to my next corner I normally have my hands right up here, but I'm realizing that now I've got to snip that one there and that one there because my piping is creeping along because sewing and clipping into place with piping are two different things sometimes. Um, you think you've got it nice and tight, but not until you've actually got your stitching sorted that you realize that you've got excess. Turn my corner, sink my needle, do a couple of stitches, lift my foot again, get it underneath that foot, let it start going. There's my join, so it's away from my corners, which I'm happy about. Look how much far off I am. So it needs to be back there. Turn my corner. Now I'm pushing the piping with this finger up so as it's sitting underneath my foot, otherwise that first stitch. Now, so let me do a couple of more stitches so as I'm lined up to go. Now what we try and do here is this, this piece which is free, because we started, that's where my cord finishes. 
I want to veer that out to the right hand side so I'm going to just put a pin in there so as it just angles it out angles it, angles it out to the side there like so so it's angled out now this is I want to come over and I want to stitch up until I can feel where this bulk into this cord hits the place where there's no cord so I want to stitch to that point I can feel it once I'm there I want to veer my piping away and I'm going to stitch off the edge and leave myself a tail so you can see that when the piping is finished on the right side you can't really see that join it's overlapped now there is some bulk there so I would probably try and pull that cord out and cut right back to where that intersection is so it's flat so I've actually got it right on the right on the on the on the point here which is great so that is ready for us to put a back onto it so you can hardly see that so let's grab a back and let's turn it over so I've got my back to back I need to leave a little gap somewhere so I'll leave a, I'll leave a little gap at the top so let's just put some clips on our corners don't worry about this excess at the moment we can trim it off later So I'm going to leave a little gap here. Now I I like to work, <coughs> excuse me, on the row that has my stitching already. I don't generally work like this because I find that my lining stretches and you'll end up with a piece here. So I'm just going to start a couple of inches away from my corner. Try and push your piping under. That wasn't even connected. Keep your seams level. You're trying to stitch on top of that row of piping. That's piping stitch that you have applied it onto. I might even push my needle over one more click. push that in we don't want to be stitching on top of the cord by the same token we don't want to be stitching too far away from it either turn our corner pull that cord away keep that edge on edge it does tend to want to wander There are particular feet called piping feet which are like a little tunnel and they make this job a lot easier but it's not it's very very hard, it's hard to show you visually with this foot I need to leave myself some turnout so I'll show you what a piping foot looks like so it's a foot that has a little tunnel in it and so <clears throat> The piping sits inside the tunnel, like the ruler, really, um, and you can adjust your needle to where it wants to be. Much, much easier to use. So there's there's a few varieties of that. Um, I don't know if I have the other one, um, but the, it, it works very, very well. So and then when you're doing this, it just sits on the ridge. But you can see. It has a tendency to catch the outside seam. It has a tendency to catch the outside seam, so I'm very, very aware of that. It just pull, pulls it and sometimes makes a pleat. So that's why I use a zip foot, but when making piping, that's very, very quick as well. So it's your choice. Every foot works differently, and you may not even have a piping foot. So I just want to cut my ends off. 
cut those tabs off there work out where I haven't stitched so I can pull it through it's there now let's just try and turn this through let's go to the far corner and bring that through let's poke our edges out I'll just pick off these threads here now there is my Oops, what have I got there? Aaron thread. There is my join, which you really, I'll bring it up, I don't know how close I can get. So it's sandwich. And so from the back, you can probably see more clearly. You don't actually see where that join is along the piping, it's almost like it's invisible. So we just need to give this a good press and remove some of the this stitching around the edge which is from our basting and there we have a very quick muck rug. Oops, there's all my bits and pieces on the back. I'll just fold that edge in and slip stitch it. So that's adding piping to an item. Thank you.